Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. What's up guys, my name is Sister J-Man and I'm back for another YouTube video. So I wanted to do this topic that I seen while I was doing the Spain-American Revolution video. And it's surprisingly that is isn't talked about that much on YouTube. And that is the Battle of Nassau. So without further ado, this is the Forgotten Battle of the American Revolution. Before we start this video, I like to say to you guys to subscribe to this channel because look at my analytics right now, 99.3% of you haven't subscribed yet. So please uh, take your time to uh, watch all of my videos right now and watching this video right now and be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos of me and uh, yeah let's go back to the video so i mentioned how the american revolution started in the spain american revolution video which you can watch it after this on the eye above but once the revolution erupted in april of 1775 virginian governor lord dormant ordered to move arms and gunpowder supplies to the town of nassau in the british colony of the bahamas governed by montford brownie so it won't fall to continental hands hearing about the arms crate move and low on gunpowder supplies in october of that same year the second continental congress established the Continental Navy and acquired numerous merchant ships turning them into battleships. While the following month they formed the Continental Marine, establishing an expedition force consists of merchant ships like Alfred, Columbus, Andrew Doria, Cabon, Providence, and Fly, along with 200 Marines and appointed Captain Samuel Nicholas and Commodore Essex Hopkins to lead the expedition. Before setting course to the Bahamas, the Congress ordered the group to clear out British ships off the Carolina and Virginian coasts, and among other tasks to boost the war effort of the the American rebels. Once this was finished, they began to move down to the Delaware River on the 4th of January 1776. While Hopkins and his company are heading down to the Bahamas, Brownie received reports from British intelligence that an American fleet had assembled at the Delaware coast and an imminent attack of the island might occur. Despite the warnings, the Governor General didn't take it seriously since he believed that two of the island's forts, Fort Nassau and the newly built Fort Montague, is heavily fortified and protect Nassau against the continental forces. But in reality, this isn't the case. As Fort Nassau, despite the 46 cannons that it has that can heavily defend the town, the defensive walls are too weak and will be easily destroyed by enemy fire. While Fort Montague, located on the eastern end of the harbor, is small but a decent fort with 17 cannons in its disposal, but the problem that these forts are poorly sighted by the British defenders. While Hopkins reached Cape Henlopen, along the way, the crew were joined by battleship Hornet and the Commodore asked his captains to establish a reservoir point in the Bahaman island of Great Abaco if the convoy were to be separated. Just two days into the journey to Nassau, the group sent back Hornet and Fly for repairs after a rough wave caused the two ships to collide with each other. And despite this, the Fly managed to reunite with Hopkins and finally arrived in Great Abaco on March 1st. Upon arrival, they encountered two British slope ships where they assaulted and captured, putting the two under their service. And the following day, they began their plan attack on the town. His plan is to move Captain Nicholas and his units to Providence and the occupied vessels dock and land the Revolutionary Army at the main port in the island of New Providence and immediately secure the town. On the morning of March 3rd, the group initiated the offense but was spotted by British defenders firing their cannons towards the ships. They then withdrew from the island soon after and returned to the main squadron stationed at Hanover Sound. Both Hopkins and Nicholas devised a second plan to land their troops in the eastern part of the island, just near Fort Montague. As for Montford Brownie, he called to position 30 of his men to reinforce the small fort and began to arrange plans to move out the gunpowder to a transport vessel out of the island. That noon, Samuel Nicholas and his men quickly landed in the east, approaching the fort without any resistance. When a British lieutenant saw the rebels and realized they were outnumbered 2 to 1, and because of this, unaware of the rebels' intentions, he came over them under a truce flag and asked the American captain about their presence in the island, where he told the lieutenant his true objectives. The Bahamian governor heard about this and sent reinforcements to defend the small fort, but once he learned about the size of the rebels, he then withdrew all of his forces to Fort Nassau. The rebels then captured the fort that same day, and rather than pushing forward to assault Nassau, the captain decided to put the attack on hold and camp his army there for the day. While Nicholas and others are resting, Essex Hopkins issued to the local inhabitants a proclamation saying, quote, to the gentlemen, freemen, and inhabitants of the island of New Providence. 
The reason of my landing's unharmed was to force on the island to take possession of the powder and warlike stores belonging to the crown. And if I am not opposed in putting my design in execution, persons and properties of the inhabitants shall be saved." End quote. With the Hopkins speech on the locals, and the Commodore himself not opposing his fleet to block the Nassau port channels of the island, the British governor used this distraction in the early mornings of March 4th to load up the needed 200 barrels of gunpowder aboard two vessels out of New Providence and and sailed out to St. Augustine, Florida. That same day, Samuel Nicholas ordered his 200 armed marines and 50 sailors to march towards Nassau, and easily took both the fort and the town and eventually captured Brownie without any resistance. Despite the Continental Army weren't able to get the gunpowder from the British, they did however looted weapons and supplies from the island and stayed there for two weeks, and left the island on March 17th. In the early months of April, while the crew are sailing towards New London, Connecticut, they confronted a six-rate British ship called HMS Glasgow, and without hesitation, the larger ship attacked Hopkins and company where they tried desperately to suppress Glasgow and capture it. However, the six-rate ship escaped and was able to severely damage both Alfred and Cabon. They were taken to a nearby port for repairs and on April 8, 1776, the Continental crew finally arrived at New London. Upon arrival, they were greeted with cheers and praise for their success at Nassau. However, the people's cheers began to sour down when the Congress heard the news of of Hopkins's failure to capture HMS Glasgow and complaints of bad behaviors within the captain's ranks that led to the commander's removal from command in 1778. As for the imprisoned Montfort Brownlee, he was traded for American General Brigadier William Alexander, who was caught by British forces at the Battle of Long Island. While the colony of Bahamas was later captured and occupied by the Spanish in 1782 until the following year where it was taken back by a colonial army loyal to the crown at the end of the war. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'm glad that I'm back uh, making these videos. I've very missed, you know, making these uh, videos, you know, it's been a long time since, you know, doing these. So if you don't want to miss me or, you know, if you want to, you know, see more of these, be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram because if you know, I, I have an Instagram which I'm currently, you know, resting from posting there uh, if you don't follow me but yeah uh yeah be sure to follow my three uh, social media sites and uh also don't forget to click uh these two videos that are popping up in the screen right now so yeah thank you guys for watching stay safe and see you guys in the next video peace bye